This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey guys, Maven here. Now, I know you're curious. Backstage, the show is over, the cameras, they've stopped rolling. Which WWE wrestlers are actually jerks? Well, the YouTube channel, The Sportster, made a video revealing 10 wrestlers who are jerks in real life. Now, I haven't seen this video, but I was informed by my producer that I worked with all 10. So let's watch this video together and I'll tell you if I agree with Mr. Sportster's picks as someone who actually worked with all these wrestlers. 10 wrestlers who are jerks in real life. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is a real American, a real American jerk. Becoming one of the biggest wrestling stars in the world has given Hogan one of the biggest egos. He's stubborn, has high demands, and was secretly recorded using a number of racial slurs. I could go into Hogan's issues with what he said with racial and stuff, but I'm just, I'm not gonna go there. Mr. Sportster, I agree with where you're coming from. Yeah, he can be, can be you know, a little bit of a jerk at times. And I've heard stories from other people and how he treated them. But also, I don't, professional wrestling isn't what it is today without the, the commercial appeal of Hulk Hogan happening in the 80s. Production can increase tolerance and sometimes you can be a little bit more tolerant of someone when they provide you with so much. And I agree with that. However, I can also understand where someone's coming from when I think of what they've had to deal with and put up with. I can't imagine what Hulk Hogan has been through in 40 years in this business. During the end of his WWE run, Hogan refused to put over superstars as he defeated Randy Orton and Shawn Michaels, among others. Was he a jerk that somebody gave him a contract that gave him full control? I don't think so. I mean, hell, if you're sitting, if you get a chance to go to your boss and you know give him a list of all the things you will and won't do and your boss says no problem just tell me what those things are are you not going to do it of course you're going to do it i don't think he's a jerk for that hogan was always great to me he was always nice to me i mean i'm not saying we had a relationship we weren't going back out and kicking it but he always would come up to me hey what's up brother and yeah, yeah. so Mr. Sportster, I'm, I understand where you're coming from with, with Hogan. I just don't 100% agree with where you went. And keep in mind, one of the reasons that somebody might come across as a jerk is just the physical toll, the pain that wrestlers go through. Wrestling is taxing. It's taxing on the body and the mind. I know to deal with my bodily injuries, I took my fair share of painkillers. I had to make sure I was gonna be in the next town to get my next paycheck. And I handled that incorrectly. Today, I fortunately have healthier ways to take care of my physical health, and I also have healthier ways to take care of my mental health as well. And that way, is today's video sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp matches you with a therapist and lets you talk to them however you feel most comfortable, either through a phone call, video call, or messaging. And it could not be simpler. Just go to my link, betterhelp.com slash maven and answer a few questions. And you'll be paired with a licensed therapist, usually within 48 hours. It's okay to ask for help. I mean, there's a reason over 4 million people have turned to BetterHelp. Again, you can go to betterhelp.com slash maven or choose Maven Huffman during sign up to get a discount off your first month of therapy. Randy Orton, when you've been discharged from the Marines for bad conduct, you know you have some personality issues. Even before he was a superstar as he is now, he's the one guy that always got a reputation for his let's just say backstage attitude. He's trashed hotel rooms, gotten into multiple backstage fights, and was even accused of filling up a female personnel's bag with baby oil and other damaging products. 
I have nothing to say about that. When a mistake occurs in the ring, Orton will openly berate the superstar in the middle of the match without a care in the world. For those of you that don't know, I rode with Randy for the better part of two to three years, and he was one of my best friends in the business. So admittedly, I'm viewing him through rose-tinted glasses. The Randy that I used to know, he had a very, very small Rolodex in his phone of people that he would go to, that he would trust. And I'm assuming now that he has a family, that Rolodex has gotten even smaller of people that he no longer trusts. Hell, I'm not even on that list anymore of people, of his go-tos that he, that he, you know, would would lean on a lot of people have told me that randy is way better now than he used to be the jerk that you think randy was or possibly still is i guarantee you has to deal with more stressful situations during a week of live television than most people do in an entire year and yeah, I'm probably biased. Mr. Sportster, you're, hell, you're not probably not wrong. He probably is a jerk, but ah, hell, I like the guy. Sorry. JBL. The B in JBL might as well stand for bully. The former world champion pulled no punches when he started rising up the WWE ladder and would knock down anyone in his way. Many wrestlers like the Blue Meanie and Rene Dupree have spoken out against his bullying ways and JBL often treats his fans in the same light. When we were out spending a few days with The Undertaker, the question came up to Taker, who was one person that you don't think gets their due and without hesitation he he said jbl i never experienced jbl being rude to me backstage however i can understand i was in the ring for the blue meanie incident i was there i did see how he treated some some of the people backstage and yeah he didn't he he <laughs> He was, let's just say he wasn't trying to make any friends, didn't need them. And some people probably just didn't like his laissez-faire attitude backstage or his almost, you know, just brutish way he carried himself. But I also know that yeah, JBL, he's, yeah, I, I got to view it. He's, been, he's always been nice to me, so hell, <laughs> I like the damn guy. Kevin Nash. Looking into your skills as a parent can give you a good indication to whether a wrestler is truly a jerk or not. In Kevin Nash's case, he got into a brawl with his 18-year-old son as both men were arrested, bruised, and battered. I gotta be perfectly honest, I think it's, it's off-putting and extremely unfair to tie in why someone could be a jerk to other wrestlers or to fans with uh, an altercation, a, a domestic situation. Were you there? Were you in the room? Do you know why him and his son got into an all, uh, got into a fight? Do you know why the the two were arrested? No, you don't. You have no clue. So I would leave that out. Nash was often a huge jerk in WCW where he used his power to push around people and make creative decisions that only benefited him. When Nash got to the WWE, he had already had a Hall of Fame career under his belt. So I understand why people say he was a jerk, but he was never a jerk to me. He just wasn't. I also wasn't in WCW, but I also know that once you get a chance to make top dollar, and once you get a chance to hold on to a little bit of power, you're gonna do it. I would, I would have done, had given the opportunity, I'd have done exactly the same thing that Nash did. Sometimes people mistake jerk with being honest and they just help don't like what someone has to say. I mean, that's a different, that's a completely different video all in itself. You can listen to Nash, not like what he has to say, but I don't think that makes him a jerk. Bubba Ray Dudley. If you're excited to meet the Dudley boys, stick to conversations with Devon Dudley, commonly referred to as the nice one. If forced to answer, I guarantee you Bubba loves having the moniker you know, of being the mean Dudley. Bubba and I shared some of the same vices. Bubba and I shared a lot of the same desires for 
what happens after a show <laughs> as much as what went into a show, if you know what I mean. Bubba Ray openly dislikes people and doesn't like to communicate with fans. Stories often surface of Bubba treating new wrestlers poorly and hitting them pretty hard in the ring. I understand where people are talking. I've seen Bubba be very curt with people and that's just the way he is. That's just, that's the New York coming out in him. You, you're in New York long enough, people are, they're not nice. And sometimes that curtness can come across as not nice. He's unapologetic for his actions. And this is one of the main reasons he was called Bully Ray during his tenure in TNA. I also think that Bubba and Devon both enjoy having just differing personalities in a tag team that is arguably one of the greatest tag teams of all time. It's just hilarious to me that going into my career, Bubba was the one that took to me immediately and Devon was the one that hated me and I talked all about it in a previous video. So it's just, it's funny that it, had I had done, had I had made this video in 2002, top 10 wrestlers who are jerks in real life, Devon Dudley would have been one or two on my list. And Bubba, I'd had some good times with him, so he, he didn't make my list. Goldberg. Goldberg's explosion into the spotlight also helped create a giant ego for the wrestling star. This has caused Goldberg to clash with fellow wrestlers, including a memorable backstage brawl with Chris Jericho back in 2003. I was actually backstage for that brawl with Jericho, and maybe at a later date, I'll recall what I remember. Goldberg came into the company in 2003, and I don't remember many who were excited about his arrival. I don't remember many who thought he was going to actually add much, if anything, to the show. If I consider Bill a jerk in any way, it's just the simple fact that he didn't work a full schedule. I, I, I wanted to see more of him. I wanted him on the road with us more. But a lot of guys got mad because he strolled in making a few million dollars a year to do limited shows. And keep this in mind, if you're making $1 million as a WWE wrestler before taxes, that comes out to $20,000 a week. If you're making several million, I'll let you do the math on that. So for us guys on pay sheets who were trying to scratch and claw and get as much money as we could. We, we needed all the help. We looked for any, any way we could put butts in those seats. And having Bill on the show definitely helped. His carelessness in the ring also angered a lot of wrestlers and caused more backstage drama. He was only in the WWE for a year before things became too much and he left the company until his return in 2016. Now, personally, is Bill Goldberg a nice guy? Man, he's the sweetest guy you could ever meet. There is not a mean bone in that man's body. And for all you people that think he's a jerk to fans, not at all. He is just the nicest guy. So I understand why he made the list, but this is a perfect example, Mr. Sportster. If you knew the man, you wouldn't put it on the list. Vince McMahon. In many cases, you have to be a real selfish jerk in order to make it in the business world. I'm gonna go ahead and put out the, the, the disclaimer in case you guys aren't reading into it. This video was done seven years ago before obvious Vince McMahon allegations. Just a disclaimer. Vince McMahon has made a lot of tough decisions during his time in the WWE, but sometimes he takes things a little too far. Vince never asked anybody to do something he wasn't willing to do. And for that, I give you the Rikishi stink face. The fact that Vince was willing to take the stink face, the move, the one move that every fan saw and cringed. I want you all ask yourself, is that a move that you would take? I know it's one I'm glad I didn't have to take.
He's mocked people on air, put them in uncomfortable situations, and has been accused of sexual harassment on numerous occasions. Now, I've always stated that Vince is a businessman. He signs the front of the checks, I sign the back. And allegations aside, Vince was always, always good to me. He treated me as he should have, as a business associate, not buddies but a business relationship. I actually did a video talking about my relationship with Vince McMahon and you can watch that video in full, but after you finish this one, of course. Triple H. Triple H loves to bury talent to put himself over. It has been said for years and continues to be proven to be true. He married into the McMahons and has used that power to become an even bigger jerk. With Hunter, I'm not qualified to say whether him and Stephanie love each other. I don't know the ins and outs of their daily relationship. I do know guys backstage would view his placement as a lucky coincidence for him. But say what you will about the man, two things are true. He's one of the best technical and psychological wrestlers of all times, period, hands down. And two, he knows the business inside and out. Whether you like it or dislike it, I, I understand, I get it, and I do, and I have heard, and you know, I've maybe even been involved in conversations backstage where people might just bemoan his placement and his <laughs> family placement. But a lot of that, and myself included, was probably a little bit of jealousy and, and a whole heaping helping of envy at the same time. It's not something I'm, I'm, I'm happy with and it's definitely something that the older I get, I'm, I'm glad I was able to, to put that aside. Numerous superstars have openly complained about Triple H, including CM Punk, China, Goldberg, Kurt Angle, and Brock Lesnar. If I ever, if I, if I ever had a wrestling question and I asked him, he gave me a straight answer. He not only gave me my first pair of wrestling boots, but he was always trying to make me somewhat better. Now, was he doing that tongue in cheek? Was he doing that and then burying me in the production meetings backstage? I don't know. Maybe he was. A lot of times in life, decisions about you and your career are gonna be made when you're not in the room. I found that out firsthand, and it's something that with time, I just learned to live with. And today, I'm fine with it. Hardcore Holly. Stiff shots, a major attitude, and a big ego have all led to Holly's distinction as one of the wrestling's biggest jerks. Yeah, Bob can be, he can be seen as a bully. And I, I do understand where some of the things he, he did backstage can come across as mean to, to, to other wrestlers. But then again, it's a different world now, and it was a different business you know, 20 some years ago. And when I was coming up and they put me in the ring with him for house shows, that was to find out, was I gonna fold? Was I gonna bitch? Was I gonna complain? Or was I gonna strap on a set of marbles and go out and do a job that men do? And the way you find that out is to put some money in the, in the ring with other men, tough men. And Bob, Bob was a tough guy. Bob is a tough guy and Bob hangs his hat on his toughness, and that's a point of pride in his life. Everything that Mr. Sportster just said about Bob, Bob would say about Bob. Not only is he hard hitting against wrestlers, but he's openly rude to fans and only talks to them when he feels like it. This has allowed the former champion to create a reputation that follows him wherever he goes. I tend to think that Bob would be perfectly fine with being called a jerk. I never found him as a jerk. He's actually one of the guys that if he and I see each other to this day, a smile instantly forms on both of our faces and we immediately hug and embrace each other. That said, I do know that Bob rubbed a few guys backstage the wrong way. I know he had his run-ins with guys like Rene Dupree over the rental car and you know, sometimes you know, heads are just gonna butt. Bob's the kind of guy that you have to earn 
his respect. Respect is not freely given from Bob, but once you earn it, then a bond is formed. Then you see each other through the same lens and not from an outside looking in. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar will be the first person to tell you he's a jerk, plain and simple. He doesn't like people, only talks to people when he has to, and doesn't care if he offends anyone. Brock's a guy that's in no way, shape, or form trying to please you or anyone else. And he's perfectly fine with living his life that way. And when you are that big, that menacing, have made that much money for the company, or, and are that talented, and to boot can back it up, yeah, there's not many people you don't have to not be a jerk for. For me, Brock was a guy that we came up kind of, sort of, at the same time. And Brock was a guy that I shook his hand at catering and then that was the end of our relationship. We never found ourselves backstage just, you know, hey, did you, did you see? Did you see the new Terminator movie? It just was never our relationship. Dean Ambrose openly admitted that he was a challenge to work with, and Lesnar has said some offensive things through the years, including homophobic slurs. Brock liked a certain group of people, and he, like Randy, kept his circle extremely close. And he has every right to do that. I think he probably had a lot of people that wanted to latch on and he he wasn't going to have he wasn't going to have people that he wasn't going to have people latching on to him. Brock has a right to be how he is and although I agree with what you're saying, I understand with where he's coming from. My overall reaction is Mr. Sportster, you got a lot of these right, but what you missed is important. I understand negativity sells and of course gets all the publicity, but what you're not hearing is the human things these guys do. The one show my mom got to come and watch me wrestle live, every wrestler on that roster made their way over and took some time, introduced themselves to her, and made her smile, made her night. And that's something none of you are hearing about. But I know what you're saying. Maven, you're too nice to everybody. Well, I got a name for you then. One person left off this video who is a absolute jerk, 100% teetotal asshole is 